Hello all you beautiful people and welcome back to the channel. This is a quick update on the CNC My E-Wheel sliders for the S22. This here, that'll focus, is one of the original sliders. So just so you guys know, you have to take out four bolts to pull off each slider and on mine that one was loose that one was loose that one was loose and that one almost stripped that one was loose that one was loose that one completely stripped it was so in there my stripped screw removal tool snapped in half in the head so I had to drill it out I tried putting a flat in it with my Dremel there and I couldn't even get it out with a large flathead hammering it in there I ended up having to drill out the entire head of the screw and bust it off in order to get this off of there you could see I tried to make a hash one direction and the other direction and it did not work and just FYI none of the screws had Loctite in them I will make updates as I move along with this. And we're back to the other side. So quick update for anybody wanting to attempt this project. I would say as far as taking the wheel out of the main frame, it's probably like a level three, level four. Almost anybody could do it. Couple of screws, the connectors, it slides right out. <clears throat> One thing I do want to note is that when you're pulling that part of the wheel, the battery frame casing off of this section, you have to pull it straight up. Like, I mean perfectly vertical. What happened to me is it was sliding out of the frame and it came down and crooked a little bit and oh boy was this stuck in that I could not get it out I had to lay it on its side wiggle it a bunch until I could get it lined back up again for it to slide back out so just keep in mind when it comes to pulling these two apart you do have to I mean lift it straight up I would probably say do it in a nice swift motion so it just comes out I was doing it slowly because I didn't want this to fall over on the concrete. That is the one that was bad. These are the two that were on this side and all of those screws were loose. Not a single one of them was tight. Again, none of them had any Loctite on them at all. I don't know if I posted this before, but something I do want to note with the top cover here is there is a lip you could see it there that edge that goes all the way around this top cover and that actually sits inside of the lip on here and there is a gasket all the way around that so as far as the main board goes the part where oop, the plugs a little bit of power left in that the the plugs go through down into the casing here there is a rubber gasket here and the screws go through and hold it on mine I don't know if this is normal was missing that screw so even from the frame here the battery packs it's sealed all the way around the top it's sealed at the top of this portion where this meets the board holder the top of the unit and then the only thing that's exposed underneath is where the the three wires for the motor and the Hall sensor plugs in too. That is where this red cap sits over and the wires go through here and there was this white silicone. I wouldn't say that was any sort of protection whatsoever, but again, like with some of the other wheels, the likelihood water is going to go up around that into that channel and then continue again to go up to where those connections are is pretty pretty slim the point between that plastic and the bottom of this metal piece there is also no gasket so 
if you guys want to waterproof your wheel a little further, it's super easy to get to those screws and take them off, take that little cover off, and maybe put some silicone or black RTV on that piece there before you put it back. Obviously the ports for the charging do have the covers. So all in all, this wheel is actually very, very waterproof. One of the best I've seen. Another thing to note quickly is that is the thermal paste. That is the board holder. Underneath, there is no thermal paste. So if anybody knows anything about computer components and heat transfer and the reason why we use thermal paste and thermal conductive whatever you want to call it, pastes, liquids, anything of the above, that should actually be on that side and it should stay in somewhat of a liquid state. Once it starts to dry up, it starts to lose its effectiveness. So I watched a few videos on people doing this project with the CNC sliders and that thermal paste was getting all over people's hands, like everywhere. Mine is solidified and stuck on the opposite side of where the cooling needs to happen. So a few nuances between every wheel, but that is kind of a weird issue to me. I'm going to clean that up and replace that with some quick silver thermal paste. And that is about it for now, actually. I will show you guys. Sorry, I'm recording from my phone. and It's an LG Turd. The sliders on this side. So a quick note from people that have seen the videos. There's little pins that stick up from the CNC slider that the bearing wheels go on top of. They only sit down on there like maybe an eighth of an inch and you have to hammer them on the rest of the way. I hammered this side on as hard as I can for quite some time now and none of these seem to be protruding out the same distance and all of the ones on this side are all sticking out a little bit further so I don't know how much that matters they're all on there extremely tight however you know there's not a ton of detail in the video and no instructions so the video is the only thing to rely on on taking this wheel apart and replacing the sliders so for the project as a whole as it sits right now I would say an 8 or a 9 on the experience level and for the people faint of heart do not take this project on you know this this right here is a perfect example of panic mode what the heck do you do now your S22 is SOL because you have a bolt completely stripped and screwed inside your wheel on your sliders so again I'm almost done with this I'll be testing it out I'm actually gonna throw the stock shock with the 750 pound coil back on it to test it how the wheel should be for people that don't have a shock upgrade or don't plan to get any coils or can't get any coils on how much better that actually works from these turds I am 220 pounds, so do keep that in note. If I say the 750 pound coil is soft with these sliders, it still might be stiff for some of you, significantly lighter than me. So overall, not a horrible project, not something I would recommend to anybody unexperienced. The wheel is very waterproof, and I'm going to continue on now show everyone real quick when you stick the wheel on that's as far as it goes so it's just a tiny little bit and it kind of sits flat when you push it but that's as far as anybody could push it by hand which is just very tiny I mean it might be 1 16th of an inch all right I'll keep you updated here shortly and welcome back again so as you can see I got my vice grips in there what they tell you to do in the video is to like fold up a rag of sorts and put it underneath it because this does have play in it. So when you're trying to hammer the wheels onto the studs, the whole thing kind of flexes and shakes. So unless you have something wedged underneath there, 
i.e. my vice grips there, to kind of keep that rigid to get those on, it's very, very difficult to get the wheels on. Also note, those four bolts right there are all that hold this on. So me personally, I would undo that screw on each side, take off the whole slider frame, and just put it flat on something like, I don't know, the concrete, so then you have a nice, smooth, easy surface while you're trying to hammer on the wheels. Also note, this is the shaft that goes through the linkage there with those screws, and they tell you to use these as a median to go over the race there, the inner race, to hammer these on. I don't know if you could see that there, the gouge in the CNC on the slider itself where the stud is. This does not fit perfectly over that stud, and I can't tell you how many of those studs have those nicks in it, and how many times I had to re-correct the threads on this, which, mind you, this is how your suspension goes together. So if you use this as a tool and you mess up those threads real bad and you can no longer get those little screws back in through there into this, you can't get your suspension back together anyways and your wheel is going to be SOL unless you have a re-threading tool and you're going to fix it. So the whole edge of this is, again this camera is absolutely horrible, it's all flattened and messed up. I mean, the whole thing. And mind you, look at the head of it. I'm also beating the hell out of the head on this thing, so now, one, it doesn't look nice anymore, and two, it's pretty flattened. Luckily, I kept checking to make sure the Phillips, sorry, the hex wrench, the Allen key, still fits in here properly, and it, it still does, but, I mean... The abuse that this has to go through to get these on is kind of absurd. For the money you pay for these CNC sliders, y you should get a friggin' tool, dude. Like, CNC a tool and provide it with this, period. Also note, if you look at the metal there, none of it is buffed. It is deburred, but holy crap. Are these points on the ends extremely sharp, and so is the bottom edge. If you are not careful, don't mind the blood all over my hand, these will get you. If you slip and slide your hand along any of this, even these top corners, all of it is extremely sharp. So again, for the $230 or whatever it was to get these to the U.S., these should be at least buffed. And you know, like smooth, not so sharp, and you should get a proper tool to hammer on the bearing wheels, not use part of your wheel that you need to put your wheel back together. So that is a quick update. By the way, this has taken me way more time than I thought it would to get these on here. So leave yourself like an hour or two of your day to put these together. And again, I would take out the motor bolts personally, lay it on a flat surface, and you're going to have a way easier time doing it. There's the other half still, and I am going to put this together, see how it works, and keep you updated. <laughs> Don't run into the chicken food. You're joining me on the first initial thoughts and review of the CNC sliders. This is me taking it out for the first time other than bouncing on it in the garage. For everybody wondering, yes, this is exactly how the S22 should have been launched. CNC versus 3D printed. I went with the CNC just for longevity purposes. I had no issues getting them from my eWheel.com. It took about a week to get them. And personally, the 3D printed ones, I just don't trust enough to not fail over time or cause any binding. For 
the difference, it is put a smile on your face difference. Like you get the S22 out of the box and you go, this is a great wheel. You ride it around if you've never had suspension, you're like, this is fabulous. A lot of people noticed over time it does get stiff and it is due to the nature of the stock sliders and how they run in the channels. With this CNC ones, granted this is no long term review, but you hop on this wheel immediately after install and you're like, wow, what a difference. There is points in this video here as I'm cruising around that that you can see the suspension moving and I didn't even know I was really hitting any bumps. It is that much of a difference. It absorbs really well. You feel like you're riding around, you know, in a car, essentially. It's night and day difference. I have the compression all the way to soft just because I like a cushy ride and the rebound is turned, I think, eight clicks from fast. However, one thing to note, with the sliders having this much freedom now, you're relying on the coil, obviously, and this wheel, unlike my other wheels with coils, feels very springy. The Hero with the coil feels like a sponge to me. It absorbs all the impacts, you slowly come back from it, it's very comfortable and not bouncy feeling. This wheel, hitting small stuff, it absorbs it quick, it absorbs it well now with the CNC sliders, but when you hit bigger stuff, you will see me in the video kind of bounce a few times afterwards, and that is that kind of, I feel like I'm being held up by a spring and not an air shock effect. It is quite impressive, the difference between the stock sliders and these sliders. I would personally go CNC and recommend people to CNC. I would say without a doubt, if you could get your hands on bearing sliders and you want to take on the task, do it. It is what this wheel should have came with and it is amazingly comfortable. RevRides is doing 3D printed versions and I talked to the owner and I believe they are going to offer install on people's S22s for about a hundred bucks. So that if you're local to me and local to Portland, Vancouver area, that is an option for you guys. I obviously will do more testing with this as I move along, but as it sits right now, I will be definitely doing a comparison once again between this wheel, the S18 without coil and with coil, the Hero with coil, and the T4s, just to do a general how the shock feels, how suspension feels between all of the wheels. And like I said, with, with the CNC sliders, the bearings in general, it opened up this wheel to a whole new world. Both street riding and off-roading in this little short time I did this quick video. It's amazing. I mean, it's very comfortable other than the springing, which I believe you could fix with the rebound and compression. This is now one of the most comfortable wheels I own. It, I could probably make it better than the Hero just because it's got more power and longer suspension travel. So as a quick update, I just really like this. The CNC sliders do poke out from the bottom and so does the bottom bearing wheel. So that is a concern to me. And the project was not that easy. I pointed out earlier in the video of things I would note. And again, if, if you're faint at heart or you're not comfortable doing it, do not take the project on. If you could find somebody local to do it, hopefully Alien Rides will offer it as well have it done because it'll make your S22 feel like a brand new wheel. I am not kidding. I'm not sponsored by my e-wheel. As you guys know, I got the CNC ones over the 3D printed ones at a preference and it cost a lot more. However, it does make the wheel incredibly comfortable and like it should have came out of the box. Hope you guys enjoy the content. 
hope you guys enjoy the videos. I do have quite a bit coming now to compare this to two T4s. I own the V1 and the V2 and some RGB adding to the M10 IV. So consider subscribing, ring that bell for the newest content. If you have any questions, drop it down below and have a beautiful day, you beautiful people.